Hello everybody! In this video, I will present you a watch app called WatchMe. The objective of this application is quite easy. The idea is to show images of some famous Alfa Romeo cars with some explanation, and the idea is to manipulate the basics, storyboard for watchOS, the menu, and static and dynamic handling of views. Let's see how this app watch works. So I launch it, so you here have a picture. If uh, I change uh, the picture, uh, you can display uh, other cars, okay, like that, in that direction. And I go back, and here, if I go back, so it's a cycle. Uh, here, as you see, uh, I can get um, an explanation menu and go uh, there to see uh, the explanation. Here I return. Here I have access to uh, the uh, about application. If I force press, then I can change uh, the uh, transparency of the image and I can restore it here. And if I ask for some information, uh, I get here this information about uh, the car and I can go back, of course, if I change uh, the car, uh, for example, uh, I go to uh, this one and if I do a force touch, I get this information. It's a different one, okay? So it's a dynamically loaded uh, view. So let's have a look on the way you create a watch app. So it's as for the extensions, you click on plus here and you just select watch choice. And so here I can create a watch kit app. So I do next. Here I can include or exclude notification scenes. Here I exclude notification. And I just create uh, the uh, element and what you see is you have here my watch app with all the information that will describe the watch from the application side and here what's the extension. In fact it's in the first uh, version of watchOS everything here was executing on the phone only and this was the part that was uploaded in the uh, Apple Watch. Now it's more complex and things tend to be more uh, going into the watch uh, as far as I understood. Uh, and you see that here uh, I can uh, provide the uh, icon, here I can provide uh, things etc etc, I can create complications etc. Et so you have everything set up to create your application and here of course you have code. Let's first have an overview of the project structure. So here you have the main application. We will do nothing on this main application because we are only interested in developing the watch app. Here you have the on-watch description of the storyboard interface and lots of things you will have. And here you have the description of the uh, extension itself that executes a priori on the watch this time. You will notice that you have uh, two uh, assets xcassettes folders uh, with uh, icons and images etc etc and here everything you put there will be on the watch, everything you put there will be in the phone extension and uploaded to the Apple Watch if necessary. So we have no choice, we must go through storyboard. So even if I prefer the gig mode, I have myself to go to storyboard. So this is the storyboard part of this application. You have the main entry point of the application. Here you have static views, okay, that are directly connected thanks to storyboard this one to this button and this one to this button. You notice that here it's a sort of push view-like appearance 
and I have nothing else but this description to perform since it's completely static. And this one is a bit different. It's another uh, interaction mechanism that allows you to have a list of uh, screens uh, you can uh, pass from one to another. And here you have another uh, view uh, we, that will have its own uh, controller uh, and that will be uh, dynamically initialized. Um, let's have a look on every uh, important element. So here, this is the main entry point. So I told you in other video that uh, you had groups. So here you have the first group, the group that defines here all these elements. And title label, the image, and this group embed a subgroup. Okay. And this is the subgroup. Uh, by default, uh, elements in a group are structured vertically, but here you can state that it's structured horizontally. Also here, you can specify that the size will be relative to the container. Here, this button has a width that is relative to the container and which is half of the container. So this is why these two buttons have the same size. So it's a way to insert some constraints. Uh, I strongly recommend you to have a look uh, on these panels, uh, this one and this one mainly, uh, just to uh, play with uh, parameters. Now let's have a look on uh, this uh, secondary uh, screen. It's called information. Here I just have a group with a label a separator and another label. Uh, it's interesting that to see that uh, by selecting that and having a look at the um, inspector, I associate an information controller. That is, of course, a WK interface controller. So it means that if I trigger this, automatically the associated interface controller will be triggered too. And finally, uh, here I have uh, in the interface controller the description of the menu. Here I have three buttons that are selected. One that will invoke this description and the two others that will have an effect on the uh, alpha uh, canal of the image. And in fact, if you uh, have these buttons, you will associate them to uh, methods in the main interface controller. So let's have a look on the interface controller itself. Okay, so here I am declaring a first table that contains the title of the uh, images. Here the descriptions. I could have used a table of uh, tuples, but uh, it wasn't my mood. I have a variable that shows the currently displayed picture and here I have a reference I did this reference with a storyboard a reference to uh, the uh, label for the title of the picture and a reference to the image. Now I have a display function okay and this display function set a title and set an image. And I provide you as a comment the way to set an image when the image is embedded in the phone. It's just, in our case, slower because the, each time you display an image, at least the first time you display an image, the image has to be transferred to the watch. Here I have a method that belongs to the protocol of the interface controller. Uh, and here I just invoke display. To, display the first image. And here I have two actions that are connected to these two buttons because these buttons are not handled directly in storyboard with a link to static screens. Okay, This first one goes to the previous picture and this one to the next picture. Okay, uh, So you change the value of the uh, current uh, display image and then you call display again. And now uh, we have several additional methods. Uh, these methods are associated to uh, the menu items. I did that directly with uh, control, uh, drag and drop 
from the storyboard uh, element. And this method associated to this button that provides me more description about the car I'm watching, uh, in fact, he invokes prison controller with name information. So information is the name of the storyboard element, which is associated to a WK interface controller. And here I pass a context. This context is a table with two elements. Okay, the title, a string, and the explanation, that is another string. And here, similarly, I have the two other methods. These methods just change the alpha channel of the image, 0.5 here, 1.0 here, so to uh, make it more transparent or to resume it. And these two methods, they also belong to the protocol, but I don't need them for the purpose of my application, so I just leave them as is. When I push the new screen with information, I pass a context. And so here, uh, the screen is invoked and the associated information controller comes with it. Okay. So here, uh, similarly, I have dragged, control, control, dragged and dropped uh, these two labels. Okay, so no problem, we are used to that. Here you still have these functions, I have no need for them, so I don't use them. But the awake with context, and I here have a context that can be anything, but myself, I know that this context is in fact an array of strings. So what I'm doing here is I am casting this context, that is a reference to anything, to a reference to what I want to do, and then I can use CTX here, 0 and 1, just to set the values for the labels. It's that simple. You can, of course, share data between the Apple Watch and your iPhone. Okay. In fact, you can use uh, shared space. On the watch side, you will exchange objects or NS objects, depending if you are doing that in uh, Objective-C or in Swift. Okay. And uh, you use, from the WK interface controller, a method that is called open parent application. To know more about that, please go to the fantastic manual. On the front side, uh, it's going through the UI application delegate, and you have a method that is under watch extension request, and the short name for Swift. And here, uh, I provide you a link to some additional information if you want to share data between your phone and your watch. Of course, there are much more things to see, okay? Now, this was not really true with the first version of WatchOS. You can retrieve information from sensors, okay? Uh, it was, first it was only for Apple applications, now it's opened. Uh, and then you have new APIs and mechanisms, and every new release of uh, WatchOS, especially the major release, brings this new stuff, okay? And also, I didn't go through notifications, but it's not that complex, it's quite similar. You have this WK uh, um, notification interface that you have to handle. And also complication. A complication is uh, something that you can display. You provide an icon that is uh, computed uh, regularly. Uh, and uh, also, when you tap on this complication, it automatically uh, launches your application. Okay. Uh, you can also handle the this complication. Uh, this is something new. I think it was introduced uh, Watch OS 3, I guess. What else to tell? Okay. Uh, the topic is yet rather new. And uh, in fact, the Apple Watch is uh, slowly getting into the Apple ecosystem. There are lots of applications that had a, a corresponding uh, Watch app. Um, but it's not going as fast as it went for uh, the uh, iPhone, in fact. And that's true for similar products with uh, Android-based products, etc., etc. Uh, 
Probably uh, people have a relation to uh, their watch that is different from uh, the relation they have to uh, their uh, phone. Personally, I was uh, surprised by the way I get involved in using my watch since I like very much automatic watch. But I took this watch to try it for a few weeks just to, to be able to understand how you could use it and uh, now I have it for several years. We don't have yet the killing usage uh, but we can force in some. In fact, uh, with health activities, health monitoring and some insurance uh, are suggesting people uh, to wear uh, this watch and then to monitor information, it's good and bad. Good because it enforces people to have some exercise, but also it enforces the company to have a look at what you're doing. I'm not very happy with that part. For payment, and also for sportive activities, because of course you can monitor lots of things from the watch. Of course, yourself, as a potential developer, you may play a role there by just thinking of a new killing usage for this device. Thank you very much for your attention. See you later.